Hello, everyone. It's me, Andrew. I'm here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm at Contemporary Craft today, and I thought I would do a quick little demo on how to use the jeweler saw. Now, a lot of times people get super intimidated by the jeweler saw, but once you, you know, it's, it's like anything. Practice makes perfect, and don't get too nervous, because then you're going to clench up and it's going to be bad times. So don't don't have the bad times. Um, so I thought I would go over some basics. The, uh, the basic jeweler saw that you'll have looks like this. It hasn't changed in design in probably like 300 years, um, but they have made some innovations lately. Um, so this is a, a German saw frame. This is the one I use. This is a, a green lion, super fancy. Um, there, there are all different kinds. There's one that's a, a new concepts one. Uh, they're really cool. You kind of have to find the one that works best for you and what you, you want to use it for. Um, one thing that I definitely recommend is printing out one of these guides. Whoa. This will make your life so much easier. And I wish I could remember all of these numbers. I can't. They say that you can count the teeth, but the teeth is micro mini style. So if you can see that, then maybe you get an A plus that being like bionic eye and zooming in, me not so much. So that's why they have cheat sheets like this. And what this is, is it corresponds with the gauge of the metal, which is the thickness of the metal, with the saw blade that you'll need, which is here. And these um, correlate to, uh, you need these saw blades to cut these. Sometimes you'll need a finer blade if you're going to do some more precise um, cuttings, but if you're if you, uh, it all depends on what you're doing, but generally speaking, this is what you'll need. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use our handy dandy Sharpie. I like to use an Adenti pen and, um, those are, they're really good about, um, uh, sticking on the, the metal so it doesn't rub off. Um, and then also there's a scribe. And now the scribe is basically uh, a pointy metal thing. Uh, and, it's and so it scratches the metal surface so that say your design is gonna be like, I do birds, so I'll do a bird for y'all. All right. No, you guys are great. There, there's our, do you want to be on camera? There's our friend Sharon and Stacy. Stacy was my metals teacher. Um, Stacy is also the president of SNAG, which is the North Society of North American Goldsmiths. They're currently looking for board members. We are. are board members? So, I've already become a board member this month already, so. <laughs> yeah, like all the well, maybe next month. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, what, um, I just draw out loosely sketch on the metal. Um, but there are all different ways of prepping the surface of your metals. And most people, what they do is they'll take their design and transfer that design to a piece of paper and then glue that piece of paper down to the surface of the metal. Me, I kind of just wing it freehanded a lot of times. Um, and maybe that's good, maybe that's not good. It's kind of all up to you and your design aesthetic. But I kind of feel like the more you do, like, you know, you'll figure out what works best. So you'll be, normally you'll be gluing down your design and um, 
that that kind of looks all right. It's a little bit wonka doodle, but that's all right. And then you take and you trace your design with your scribe. And what that does is, so when the Sharpie rubs off on your hand, because it says it's a permanent marker, but it's actually, uh, it'll come off, especially when you're manipulating the, uh, the metal and moving it around and sawing it and doing all kinds of things like that, it will come off on your hand. So the scribe is basically for when that happens, then you can see the lines that you're trying to cut out and then you don't have to worry about that coming off. All right. So if you had any parts that you were gonna cut out inside of your shape, you would use a center punch um, and tap it down and hammer it or use an auto punch where you just stab it basically and it will leave a little divot and then you use the um then you'll use the um the fordham or the flex shaft and drill a tiny hole and then whenever you load it up onto your piece you would string this on and close it shut and then saw it from there so you would be cutting out the internal shapes but we're not doing that today so don't worry about it. Put it out of your mind. All right. And the other thing that we're going to need is lubrication for our blade. This will help make sure that the, the saw blades <laughs> slide right through and cut like butter. So here's the, the blade. Um, I'm going to load it by when also when you're storing this you don't necessarily want to store it where the thank you <laughs> I feel like a movie star <laughs> yeah. um, so when you're storing this you don't want to store this where it's uh, the tension is taut so um, you want to make sure that at least one side is loose All right, so I've got that in there Sometimes people will take it and put it in the bench pin. This is the other essential thing that you'll need for sawing is a bench pin. Um, of course, um, I just pull this like this and tighten it and you should be able to get it. So it makes like a harp string. You hear that guys? All right. So your bench pin is, it's important to have it high enough that your work is at an angle like this. Uh, the posture is you keep your feet flat on the floor, shoulders back, and you hold it like this. Um, it's important that um, when you're holding this, you don't grip it like you're gonna strangle its life, but you're holding it like you would hold a bird. So you're gonna hold it firmly, but not so firm that you're gonna choke it to death, because otherwise, you're gonna be doing stuff like that and you're gonna break a bunch of blades. And then the sadness, and you don't want the sadness. So you'll notice on my face, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, Did it go? The mask because we're in a communal space, but the glasses because uh, blades do break. It's a fact of life. It's sad, but it happens. You know, don't name your blades and get emotionally invested in that blade for all time because one day there'll, there'll, there'll come a time when that blade is no more and that's just going to happen now there's a couple things that you can do to keep your blade lasting a long time and that's using some kind of lubrication you could use this which is bur uh, burr life you can also use blade butter um, there's a lot of different things some folks don't don't use it, um, uh, but I, I, I think it helps in anything that will make it last longer, uh, all the better. Now, when you're loading your blade, you want to make sure that your the teeth on your blade is 
facing down and that it's outward. Because if they're point, pointing to the back, you're not going to get much done. You're just going to sit there all night and, and, and look at yourself and at your project and how it's not making any progress at all. So you want to make sure that the teeth are pointing out and that they're facing down. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you get started, find a place that's close to your end. Also, the other thing that's good is make sure that your design, um, that you're going to be close to the edge. So that's not just like an economy of material, which is important, but also if you put this smack in the middle, you're going to have to cut into it. The other thing is, is that you need, with a bench pin, you've got this V shape here, and this supports the metal on both sides. And this prevents it from like wobbling around like this, because if your metal gets like crooked like this, and you're trying to use your saw blade, it will also uh, fatigue your blade and make it break. So it's important to have it uh, be relatively small so that you can support it on both sides with the bench pin. Now, when you're getting started, it's important to kind of, um, you start it at a 45 degree angle. And sometimes people will say to, to start at the, the top like this and go up until you get that notch. And then you come down like this. Now, when you're doing it, you want full even strokes so that you take advantage of all the teeth and not just a little small section. And also when you're using this, you'll be moving the metal. You don't wanna move the saw. Basically you're gonna become a machine, a very fine tuned, a well-oiled machine. And so all you do is just up and down. And this, you'll be moving this. And we'll get to a part I'll, I'll show you what happens when you get to a part where you have to turn. All right. So if you need to turn, go up and down vigorously and then turn it like that. So what you're doing is you're basically creating a little spot that has a, an area that's comfortable for the blade to turn. If you try to turn your blade while you're sawing, this will break, so don't do that. And if you do get bound up and you can feel it flexing and you can just sense that it's gonna break, just let go and your metal will sort itself out if it's caught up on it. Now, if you have to stop at any point and or your blade gets caught up and letting it go doesn't release that pressure, you can always take your blade out easy peasy. In theory, easy peasy. The other thing you want to do is make sure that you have, it's not so important with copper, but if you're working with silver, you'll want something to catch all your, your little crumbs. And that way you can collect all your crumbs at the end and send them to the refiner. All right, do we have any questions? So far, no questions, just everyone saying hi, hello. All right. Well, if you keep going, then you'll end up with this. So you, as, see that you, oh, when you're putting it on, when you actually are gonna use the, the, um, the lubrication for your blade, you just, it's like a push pop. And then you can just go like this. Yeah, 
have that. Poor thing, he doesn't have the reroll. He just doesn't find it. All right. So I hope you all enjoyed that. I'm going to stop dominating the room and let them have their classroom back and get back to work. All right. See you this weekend for the great beat extravaganza. Bye.